contract makes and it is the stated policy of our government that we are going to push hard to reverse this mix so that by the year 2030 the portion of our energy that is dependent on indigenous sources the ratio of today of 60 40 60 percent imported 40 percent local is completely reversed to 70 percent local indigenous resources and less than 30 percent on any other fuels that's our target and how do we achieve that with the alternate renewable energy policy we gave it to the board members of the uh, the renewable energy board the uh, alternate energy renewable board the provinces are going to come to us by 2025 almost 20 percent of the energy mix is going to be renewable by 2030 inshallah 30 percent of the energy is going to be on renewable basis this excludes hydel when you include 30 percent of hydel this goes to 60 percent this does not include tharcoal we are going to ramp up tharcoal the energy investments that are going to be made there are going to be invested upon so that there is another local source of energy and last but not least ladies and gentlemen we have got our nuclear resources we are actively pursuing our nuclear energy sources so that we can increase this matrix so once that happens what will happen today the cost of renewable energy is going down what we are hitting is 4.5 cents once the cost of energy goes down the people of pakistan will benefit it will become more affordable that one benchmark that we are talking about we will not be op open to the vagaries of uh, of the uh, of the international markets be it price with volatility in the energy source or in the foreign exchange another important factor ladies and gentlemen is that for any government what are you looking at You're looking about the well-being of the people of your country and in this case the pakistan tariq and saab government takes the well-being of the people of pakistan extremely seriously the prime minister in every meeting just day before yesterday we had about a three-hour session of the economic group just based on this very factor how to accelerate the economic revival of the people of pakistan of pakistan's economy and job creation that is one other metric how does job creation come about you can't go around and employing everyone in a government job the communist countries tried it but there's no other communist country left in the world they've all gone by because they realize the inefficiencies that crept into the system thereby what is important is that employment creation will come about with the industrial agricultural as well as service sector revival they will have to become more competitive the export targets of pakistan will have to be met the production targets in pakistan have to increase and one component of that happening is the energy variable the energy variable is extremely important for our exports and our production once we get a handle on that ladies and gentlemen the markets are going to increase pakistani exports our quality is second to none and let me tell you with our free trade agreement with china asian country ambassadors have been coming and meeting me and they're saying they want their companies companies are approaching them and they want to set up shop and manufacturing facilities within pakistan so that they can export to the central asian republics as well as china these are not small markets and we are going to focus on the role of afghanistan as well pakistan ladies and gentlemen is absolutely at the jugular vein of the region our focus on cpec the china pakistan economic corridor it is critical for the progress of not just pakistan but for the region it's going to be a link between the continent of africa to the manufacturing base of china and the central asian republics and pakistan itself these are the geopolitical considerations we are looking at we should be looking at how do we train our manpower to be more productive value added production facilities be it in the sector of innovative electronics 
value-added agriculture, information technology. All these things are going to happen with reliable and affordable energy sources in Pakistan, which is absolutely transparent. The interaction between the consumer, be it industrial or any other, with the departments should be minimized. The special industrial zones that we are creating, we want to make the process absolutely transparent, minimum transactional costs, reduce the cost of doing business. We've got the backbone of the internet technology available to us. We have to link that, which brings us to another aspect, Mr. Chairman, which is for you and your team and Mr. Shahid and Mr. Lodi and all the other professionals sitting here. And that is the role of today. What we are looking at is the distributed generation that is going to come about. We have to keep in mind that we have to have a completely open mind. Technology is changing at a very, very rapid rate. I keep on repeating this. There was a petroleum conference, and I repeated, I gave them a story. There was a company by the name of Kodak. Just raise your hand. Do any of you remember that company, Kodak company? Just raise your hands. Quite a few. Where is that company today? It's gone. They were involved in the film emulsion business. They they forgot that there's a technology called digitalization of photography coming about. They didn't keep it on their radar screen. The company went out of business. And they used to have that motto, if you recall, it used to be called the Kodak moment, where they used to photograph or capture the perfect moment. The Kodak moment should not happen to the energy sector. You have to evolve. If we have to keep in mind that we are not going to allow newer technologies to come in, the Kodak moment will happen to the energy sector. We should not and cannot allow that to happen. And with that, I mean that in our new policies that we are evolving, and all our team members are playing a vital and pivotal part in that, we are looking at net metering. We are looking at wheeling. We are looking at net metering at the micro level. So all these energies that are coming about, ladies and gentlemen, these are realities, and with all these demand and supply factors coming in together, you have to gauge. You have to gauge like never before the role of NPCC, the role of PITC becomes paramount. Just today, just this morning, I was with our colleagues from PITC working on these very elements, that when you have a lot of energy coming into the grid from various small consumers, what happens to the grid level, what happens to the supply of energy. You have to forecast that. And just to give you the real-time microsecond, millisecond calculations that are involved, let me just give to you that you take any of the third and fourth generation combat aircraft flying today in the air. If you take the onboard computer systems out, you can't fly the aircraft. The aircraft will crash. The reason being that those aircraft are as maneuverable as they are because they are inherently unstable. They are making more than 200 corrections per second to keep the aircraft flying. And what is doing it? It is the onboard flight management and control system, the onboard computers. What relevancy does that have to the system that is available to us today? Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, all these energy sources from the microgrids from the net metering coming into the system today, be it at the, at the 132, at the 11 kV level, all this energy coming into today, how do you forecast that? The role of artificial intelligence comes in, which has to be catered to in the demand forecasting, in the supply forecasting. All the renewable energy that is coming in, we have to look at that. The role of the distribution companies, that has to be this year our colleagues from the power sector know this year is the year of the distribution system the government the power ministry is increasing the retention that these companies are going to keep with them so that at the end of the day they can invest in their distribution system we owe it to the people of pakistan for the first time the previous ramzan that we had it was a trouble-free ramzan because my my compliments to the distribution system, the DISCO chairman, be it ISCO, FESCO, across the board, all our distribution companies, as well as, uh, as, well as NTDC, they work day in and day out 
to de-bottleneck the constraints that they faced so that we could transmit energy. And next year, we are looking at transmitting more than 26,000 megawatts, inshallah ta'ala, by next summer. So these are the benchmarks that we have. And we have to make sure that the rings, the bottlenecks are cleared even further. I'm not going to go into the technical details, but these are the challenges we have. And what sort of a market do we have? If you look, when you talk to businessmen and you talk to investors, the first thing that comes to their mind, what is the market size we are looking at? What is the investment opportunity we are looking at? And just to give you a flavor, the General Electric people, the wind turbine people that come to see me, and I said, set up your, your assembly plant in Pakistan. One, it will create jobs. Number two, all the windmills, all those turbines, you're looking at increasing your renewable energy from today's base of 1,400 megawatts, 1.4 gigawatts, to approximately 8,000 megawatts by 2025, and more than 18,000 megawatts by the end of 2030. That is a large market. You can't be lugging around these windmills and turbines. The freight cost, if you assemble it in Pakistan, you can not only cater for Pakistan's market, but you can cater for the market of the region. And if you put a price tag to each one of these uh, markets, let's look at generation. It's a $40 billion market sitting right there. By 2025 or by, uh, by 2023, we are looking at increasing our installed base to approximately more than 42,000 megawatts and taking it even beyond that. That's a ready market. So we are looking at, ladies and gentlemen, a $40 billion market in the generation side. And a lot of it is going to be a predominantly, it will be in the renewable, in the hydro, in, in, and in the coal industries. Then we, took, we look at the transmission line. The professionals here who are dealing with transmission, we, you know, we have to have multiple redundancy factors built into our transmission. Another $20 billion market over there. And keep in mind, one of the planning that we have to do, if we go on the Indus Cascade, we are looking at Bunji, 8,000 megawatts. We are looking at Basha de Amir. We are looking at Dasu. We are looking at Patan. All these factors, all these are on the Indus Cascade. And we have one shot of evacuating all, these, all this power. Why? Because the size of the valley is narrow. We cannot afford a mistake. So the transmission line has to be engineered absolutely perfectly over one of the most arduous and toughest terrains on the face of the earth. One of the transmission company people that come to see me, they said, oh, we've done work in South America. I said, great. What altitude? 3,000 meter. I said, 3,000 meters is not going to cut it here. We've got mountains over here that are going to 5,000 meters and beyond. In the valley, you just go according to you go along Thakot and you see you are at you're traveling the Karakurum Highway is approximately at 2,000 meters, 1500 to 2,000 meters above sea level. But the mountains on either side they go to beyond 6,000 meters. That's what we're looking at. The investment in the transmission system alone, 20 billion dollars market. The trans the generation side is covered, the transmission we've talked about, the Achilles heel, our soft underbelly where we have to make tremendous investment is the distribution, be it AMI, be it AMR, be it the, the whole uh, distribution network upgradation from conductors to transformers to the feedback system, the metering system, another $20 billion market over there. That is what we are looking at, ladies and gentlemen. So just the power sector market alone, we are looking at a market size of over $80 billion. And that's why people are coming here. There's a pipeline of people willing to invest. The previous government had stopped uh, investment in the renewable energy. We've opened that. There are multiple com companies coming in, inshallah. The foreign direct investment is coming in. Then you have to think about, just, just to give you a flavor of where we are in the energy train, the Saudi vice minister was here. The prime minister is going to proceed to Saudi Arabia in a few days. And we talked about some of the people here know what we are doing in Balochistan. 500 megawatts, Mr. Chairman, 500 megawatts of solar energy is coming into Balochistan. 
through the Saudi investment, 200 in Quetta city alone, the old, uh, your, your, uh, uh, post, your coastal uh, station, is uh, it, its license is expiring, so it, Habibullah Coastal, its license is expiring, it will be replaced by a new solar plant, 200 megawatts. And three other locations we've identified, 100 megawatts each, microgrid systems. This is an investment of over $4 billion right there. And this is the first phase, uh, approximately an $8 to $10 billion refinery investment, investment in the mining sector. So all these things which come in, it will not only be creating affordable energy, creation of jobs, but it's going to make your job, those of the professionals in this room, Mr. Chairman, you as the head of NEPRA, even more challenging in the, se in the sense that these are exciting times to be there in, challenge in, in managing the sector, in dealing with a rapidly evolving energy market and system in which technology is going to be playing a key role. Last couple of words and then I'm going to sign off. And the day another innovation occurs, those of you involved in the world of computers, the day quantum computing is commercialized, it is going to be a game changer in the world of energy and other factors together. And the difference is going to be between light and day. And just to give you an example, today the computing power at our available to us, we are looking at binary, 0101, that's how the processor works. With quantum computing, that computing power is going to